Yo, what's up, guys? My name's Farza, and I'm back in college, so I got my room to myself finally. Woohoo. Anyways, now today we're going to talk about something called functions, and functions are pretty awesome, and uh, let me tell you why. So let's open up our code blocks here. Ooh, actually, I was practicing a little bit. Let's ignore this. All right, so imagine that you wanted to program League of Legends. You, you had big dreams, and you, you wanted to program the game all by yourself. Well, all right, I applaud you for your initiative. But could you imagine programming all of League of Legends inside your main method? Could you just imagine for a second how terrible that would be? How having millions of lines of code in your main method would be just bad, unorganized, dirty, not clean. And I've been trying to preach to you guys throughout this series that we want to stay nice and organized in our code. And let me show you... Um, well, well, I hope you guys can see that programming all League of Legends inside your main method is a really, really bad idea. Don't do that. Okay, so let's figure out a way to be more efficient. So let's think of a simpler example where we can use functions. I'm actually doing this a lot. I don't know why. So let's think of, let's think of a simpler example where we can use functions. So let me do something here. Uh, Champions League of Legends. Okay, so... These are all the champions of League of Legends. Imagine if you went through every, if you wanted to get every champion's Q damage and then print that damage out. So you wanted to go through every single one of these champions, get their Q damage, and print it out. So right now, the only way you guys know how to do this is you would have a print statement for every single champion. And that sounds terrible, right? Because you would have 130 print statements. And one of like the laws of coding that I've, I, have, I haven't mentioned is don't... Actually, I haven't mentioned it directly. But one of those, those these laws is you want to don't repeat your code. Never have... So if I need to have 130 print statements for each, my, each one of my champions, um, there needs need to be a better way. That's too much repeated code, and I need to figure out a better way to do it. And this is where functions come in. So... A function is pretty simple. It, um, it does a job for us, and it can either give us a value back, or it can give us nothing. And that's all you, all, pretty, pretty much all you need to know. I can't think of anything, I can't think of how they could get any more, they could get more complicated, of course, but for this example, it shouldn't be too bad. So, a function has a very simple syntax. First of all, it has a return type, it has a name, it has parameters, and of course, I'm, I'm going to explain this in just a second. And then it has, let me actually unhighlight this. Then it has the code. So return type is really simple. Return type just means that, let's say we want our function to give us back something. We, we want it to give us back a number, a name, a string. A, a, it, it, we want it to give us back something. Well, it can do that for us. It has the ability to do it. But it doesn't have to give us back anything. We could tell our function to give us back nothing, and that's totally awesome, it's fine. Next we have a name, and you know, give your function a good name, you want it to have something that makes sense. And next we have these things called parameters, and these are probably the most confusing things about functions. So, the way our function works is um, we give it something, we give it something to work with. We give it like a number, a, a value, we give it something, and then it does stuff with what we give it, inside the function itself. And by the way, these two brackets are the function itself. So everything here is the function. So this is not, the main is not part of the function and everything else is not part of the function. Also, this should be declared up here. We need to put the function before the main method. So we have to declare the function before the main. And you'll see why I do that in just a sec. But just copy paste that up here really fast. So let's, I feel like if you guys see an example, it's not too bad at all. So first of all, we want to. So let's just go back to the example where we want, we, we want to print out the damage that each champion's Q does. Well, first let's um let, let's think about that. Are we returning any value? We're just we're just doing a job, right? We're just printing something out. So we're not returning anything. So this is going to be a void. And that's how we tell our function that we are not returning anything. It's it's getting nothing back. And that's that's perfectly fine. Next, I want to give it a name, and I'm just going to call it print q damage. And finally, we want to give it parameters. And 
how many? How, how do we know what to give it? Well, let's just let's just think about our issue first. We want to print out the damage that a Q does, that the champion's Q does. So we should give our function one value, and that value should be an integer, right? Because it's damage, and that integer should represent the Q damage of that champion. Correct. So all we're giving our function to work with is one variable called Q damage, which is going to represent the value of the damage that that champion's Q does. But now we want our function to do something because you know right now our function is useless; it doesn't do anything. Let's let's make it do something. Let's make it print out the Q damage is percent D. So now. What variable am I referencing with this percent %d? Well, I'm referencing q damage because that's what was given to my to my to my function. So, this parameter here might as well be like declared in the function. You 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 could just think of like, you know, in q damage that you could you could think of it as a variable that in in the function that you can use. That's all it is. You can use this variable for whatever you want in your function. And that's fine. So in this case, all I'm doing is is I'm getting this value, getting this variable, and I'm printing out the value of it. And let's well, this should be return zero, by the way. Always have return zero in your main. Well, not always, but no. I'll tell you why in a sec. We have return zero, and let's build and run this. See what happens. So it prints absolutely nothing out. What is going on? Why we told it over here? We said, hey. The Q damage is percent %d. Why, are you, why is it not printing anything out? Well, remember when I said that the main is like the command center? Well, we're not telling our main to go to this function, to run this function. We have to tell our main manually to run this function. So how do we do that? How do we call this function print Q damage? And, it's really, and you know, that's really simple. First of all, let's write down the name of it. So it's called print Q damage. And next, it needs. It needs. Uh, we're gonna put these two parentheses. It needs a parameter, right? Like over here, void print Q damage. Our method or our function, it has this parameter. It it's it says that it's. We're basically saying that this function is guaranteed an, an integer value, and it doesn't matter what that integer value is. It's just guaranteed that the function is gonna get an integer value. So we have to give it some integer value. And I'm just gonna give it 50. So, and then I'm gonna end it with a semicolon, meaning you know this statement is done. I'm done calling my function. So, let's let's loop back here and make sure we understand how this is working. So when I call print Q damage, I first go up here, and you know my computer's like, okay, I got it. So now my computer is at, is gonna ask me for some parameter. It's gonna ask me for whatever I I, I declared it. So in this case. I said I will give you a value. It's going to be an integer, and you're guaranteed that. So yeah, I gave it. I gave it this value down here. I said, okay, this is going to be 50. So now this 50 travels up here, and it gets. And now int Q damage is going to be equal to 50. So we're basically assigning this variable this value. And I hope you guys see that this variable. Th I mean, this uh, this value is being passed up here. And now this variable is being set equal to this value. And that's probably the hardest part about functions, uh, to be honest, when I was learning. I did not get this, this concept at all, where this value travels up here, and we have this variable that is set equal to what, what we passed. And then what we do is we print out the value of Q damage, because we want our function to be useful. That's what it's there for. Um, one sec. Nine minutes. Okay, so we want our function to be useful, and that's why we say, hey, printf the Q damage. And I do percent %d Q damage because, well, that's the only value I'm given to work with. I'm not given any other value or variable to work with. That's the only thing I'm given, Q damage. And I do that down here, where I give it 50. So let's run this, see what we get. And I get the Q damage is 50. So, why is this good for us? Why is this awesome? Well, now... Instead of having 130 print statements for each champion, we can just be like this. We can just say, okay, print Q damage um, 60. Print Q damage, oh, have a semicolon. Print Q damage 70. 
And I'm, I'm going to put a backslash in here, which just skips the line. You guys know that. So now let's see what we get. Oh, let me X this out. Mm, build and run. So now I have three print sta I have three print statements, or rather, I don't have three print statements. I have one print statement, but it runs three times. It runs three times because I called the function three times. So this is why you know functions are useful to us. They allow us to do things in a very organized manner. And I realize I'm at ten minutes now, so I am going to cover something else about functions later called um, return. Um, right now, this function returns nothing, right? It just, we, we say, okay, it does a job for us, but it doesn't give us back anything. So next video, I'm going to cover what um, this function return, well, how a function can return a value and how that can be useful to us. So that's going to be next video. And until then, I'll catch you guys later.